Hi everyone, um, just wanted to do this little lesson on um, Notion and more particularly about journaling. Um, as you know, I do reference a quite a lot about journaling your trades and I say it for a good reason because journaling your trade, you're going to find out what's working for you, what's not. Uh, if there's any deficiencies in your understanding of your trading edge uh, and you'll also find um, areas where you can improve on so this was something that um, came up in conversation with one of the mentorship students the other day and it's something that I've um, I've had a few calls recently with the mentorship guys and it's something that's come up quite regularly so I just really wanted to do this for everybody to to get an idea of the sort of things you really should be trying to incorporate within your uh, trading journals so what I've got here if you remember on Monday on the 16th I took a euro USD long trade I closed partials and secured three percent so if you if you've watched the notion video then you'll have an idea of how to get this uh, this page up if you use something like Microsoft Excel you can still incorporate the same type of data it might take a little bit more fiddling about but you can still you know record the same data in the same way um, but I like to use notion um, I think notion is very very good it's very organized and really easy to use so let's have a look let's break this down and have a look at these sort of information that I like to um, record so as you can see you've got the title here euro usd uh, the status of the trade was a win um, even though the remainder hit break even it's still a win because i managed to bank some uh, profit from this um, we've selected the pair euro usd and this as you know if you've watched the notion video uh, you'll notice helps us filter out the the different trade pairs um, within the main screen um, so we put in their position it was a long trade uh, the trade was opened on the 16th and the trade so even though it's uh the remaining 20% volume actually closed the following day. The actual profit was secured on the same day. Uh, so yeah, the trade was open on the 16th. Uh, the session was the London session. Um, I secured 3%. And um, so if you imagine, I didn't quite close out at 4R uh, or 4% because by the time I managed to open up MC4 and close partial trades, it retraced a little bit. Uh, and then the you know 80% closed worked out around about 3%. So the confluences for the trade, I've just selected the confluences. So we have breaker structures, liquidity inducement candle, higher time frame continuation, liquidity grabs. Um, and then the stop loss size, uh, I used eight pips for this stop loss. So I'm just gonna give a quick overview. And as you can see, there's, there's a fair amount of data um, in here. Uh, why is it scrolling down so this is everything i've recorded for this particular trade and we're going to go through why i've included certain information now one of the things that i um spoke to you about with one of the guys on the mentorship course uh on the mentorship um section was um when I was looking at screenshots, I asked him, do you remember this particular trade? That particular trade, uh, I asked him about, he said, yes, I do remember this particular trade. I then explained to him, do you remember a trade that you took over a month ago? And they said, no. So even if you just have a simple screenshot, let's say, for example, this was the only screenshot you had. You've put it in an Excel folder or you've put it into a Notion document or somewhere uh, where you've recorded it and you come back to it and this is all you've got to go off. There's not really a lot explaining um, the entire thought process. So you really want to try and paint the picture um, and try and think of it in a way that you're trying to explain the thought process of your trade to somebody that has no idea about the trade because when it comes to months or even maybe a year or two down the line if you need to come back to your own data and look at things that you've learned to establish where uh, where you've come from and how far you've progressed you're not going to remember every single trade so if you can um, explain it in a way that there's you know potentially somebody looking at it has no idea why this trade was taken it's going to paint a really um, clearer picture and that somebody is most likely going to be you okay so as we've got here i've got the overall uh, trend here uh, or the overall view on the 15 minute um some notes are overall trend is bullish prior to the poi um there was nothing left on the lick um sorry prior to the poi with the lick there was nothing left on this time frame from recent price action to come back and mitigate so this was the overall view for this um for this trade here we can see a five minute view as well we've got some notes in here we've uh, swept sell side liquidity of the asia session we've not got anything left on the five minute below to mitigate and then i've um, included a uh, screenshot of the liquidity inducement candle and then i've also highlighted a concern about this trade uh, so as we can put as we can see here on the one minute we can also see a, below the lick that there was a poi 
uh, at the lowest swing point and I was referring to this point here this was something that was in the back of my mind when I was taking this trade and I've recorded that because it's something that you know might become relevant later on uh, down the line and these are the sort of things you might start to see patterns within the types of trades that you're taking and you might think hold on this is something that I'm seeing quite often and I'm hitting break even or I'm, I'm you know my partials are only getting so far and you know potentially I'm not saying this is but potentially this could be something that you could spot further down the line that could be a hindrance to some of your trades and you might then think right I'm actually going to wait till this is mitigated before I take the trade and so that's an example so I'm not necessarily saying this was the reason the trade failed it was something I was aware of um, but it's just something you need to keep in mind when you're journaling your trades if you do spot things like this journal it write it down because like I said it, it could be a pattern um, I've then got a screenshot of the one minute entry so as you can see here we had a divergence price consolidated a little bit around my entry point we also have the divergence on the RSI indicator um, so this was all logged as well then trade management once the trade was activated we can see price had pushed up it broke past this um, high point here and this is where I've got stops to break even and I've wrote this down as well because again if you're coming back to this a little while you know in the future months or even years down the line and you've not got this on the screenshot and you've not written it down you might not understand why you've um, closed uh, or sorry why you've set stops to break even at a certain point because you, you need a visual reminder of what was going on with this trade setup. Um, and again, if we go further down, um, I've then highlighted in the trade management where I've then closed partials. So it was around this point here is where I've closed the partials. And as you can see, um, I've also put in there how long later it took to um, to get to that point. So it was roughly an hour later after the price, uh, sorry, after the trade was opened, um, price had reached just shy of four hour, uh, and you know. And the markets were slowing down at this point, and that's what influenced me to take partials and just leave the rest to run. Um, and as you can see, then I've got the full trade closure. So, you know, moving forward a little bit further, I've then mentioned that um, the following day, the remaining 20% was then taken out of break even. And I'm absolutely fine with that. Now, one key thing that um, I don't think many people are really incorporating into their journaling is their psychology and any learning points um, about that particular trade. So in the psychology, you can see here, I put, I felt happy about this setup. Everything felt right. I kept an eye on the one minute zone below the entry point, uh, but this didn't sway my judgment as I was fully aware of how bullish the higher time frame is. So if you remember from the, the forecast for this trade uh, and the outlook and everything, um, you can, we could see that you know Euro USD was very, very bullish. And I was just looking to capitalize on that um, higher time frame trend. Uh, and also with some learning points here. So for this one, it wasn't particularly much, um, particularly a learning point because what I'm referring to here is as you can see, price was consolidating for a period of time. And it wasn't something I really considered whilst the trade was opened. I just kind of left the remaining 20% to run. Um, so I probably should have been a little bit more um, focused on this, but um, I've already secured profit from this. So it doesn't really matter so much, but we can see um, price had consolidated after the partials were closed. I should have anticipated a sweep of the sell side liquidity because after this price did actually push back to the upside um, so you know when we see a consolidation if we see a sweep of buy side liquidity it usually means price is going to push down uh, and then vice versa if we see a sweep of sell side liquidity then we may see price pushed back to the upside um, but again with um, learning points I've, I've also mentioned that with the setup I could have used a slightly smaller stop loss um, I'm not too bothered about the fact that I didn't but if you look at how much um, there was barely any drawdown with this trade and if you look at the wider picture if I come up to here we can see you know there wasn't really much below this point for price to come and mitigate so you know, maybe obviously I use an eight pip stop, so maybe a six or a five pip stop loss would have been fine, but I'm not worrying too much about that because I don't want to get too greedy within the markets. Um, and again, you know, I'll put this here, would take this setup again. So if this trade um, setup came about again in the future, I'll definitely take it. There, was, there wasn't really anything wrong with the trade setup in my um, view. I took 3%, the rest hit break even, not too bothered, I paid myself. So that's the main thing that really matters. So guys, Try and incorporate as much detail as you can with your journaling. Um, take some inspiration from this because the more you're able to journal, the more you're able to remind yourself in the future why you've taken certain trades, and the more detail you can you know, include, the clearer things are going to become. And it's going to really, really help accelerate your learning process and even just your um, trading experience in general. So 
Guys, hope you found some value with this. Um, if you have any questions, as usual, please feel free to let me know.